Tonight, Google is in the business of making drones. Netflix speeds up after paying out. And Mozilla has a new interim CEO. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 65 for Monday, April 14th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit makes electronics repair easy with free repair guides, plus all the parts and tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right into the tech feed. First up, uh, Google announced that it has agreed to purchase drone manufacturing startup Titan Aerospace, along with its 20 or so employees, uh, for an undisclosed sum. Titan currently produces solar-powered drones that are designed to stay in the air and fly nonstop for years. Why is Google interested in drone technology? Why, for the same reason, it's been working on Project Loon, which is the company's high-flying balloon project designed to distribute internet connectivity to hard-to-reach areas of the world. The Titan team will work work closely with the team on Project Loon as they focus on advanced material design for the crafts as well as advancing uh, or as well as working on advanced algorithms for determining flight paths and wind predictions. Interesting to note that a single Titan aircraft, according to the company, was set to deliver up to one gigabits of connection, uh, covering 1,000 miles for up to five years, just staying up in the air that whole time from one craft. It's crazy. Also, uh, Facebook was rumored last month to be getting ready to buy Titan Aerospace, but ultimately, they ended up buying Accenta for their own solar-powered drone efforts. Once again, Google and Facebook playing in the same sandbox. There you go. If you have Comcast and watch Netflix, you've probably noticed an increase in streaming speeds. According to their own ISP ranking, download speeds of Netflix are up 65% to 2.5 megabits per second in March from 1.5 megabits per second in January. Of course, this has everything to do with a controversial deal between the companies some have called payola. In February, the Wall Street Journal revealed that Netflix agreed to pay Comcast for a direct connection to the service. In a blog post today, the company said, quote, this month's rank Rankings are a great illustration of how performance can improve when ISPs work to connect directly to Netflix. It's been 18 months since the last update and two weeks since the Microsoft Build Conference, and now developers can download Windows Phone 8.1. The new operating system features the Cortana Digital Assistant, a new notification center, and tiles for the smart screen. You're not a registered Windows Phone developer? Well, you too can become one and then get the software for yourself. There are some limitations and features not included in this build, and some phones may not support it, or the software could void the warranty until officially supported, so you can make up your own decision for yourself. Coming up, who needs Google Glass if you have Google contact lenses? And up next, I'll be chatting with Frederic Lardinois about what the appointment of Mozilla's new interim CEO will mean for the company. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains and 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard, specialty, and security bits. It also includes ESD safe precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, and opening tools to get inside any phone. Notebook, tablet, game console, opens them all. Lightweight, compact, and durable, it's the gold standard for electronics work from garage hackers to the CIA and the FBI. But more importantly, iFixit's unique tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. Backed by a one-year warranty, the ProTech Toolkit is only $69.95. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for free step-by-step -step repair guides and all the parts and tools you'll need. Enter the code TN2 at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit. All right, I want to welcome to the show Frederick Lardinois, who's writer at uh, TechCrunch, to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today, sir. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. Uh, Frederick, you wrote an article earlier today about Mozilla's announcement that they've appointed an interim CEO to the company, but we had to wade through a lot of controversy uh, to even get to this point. So let's start there for the for those who aren't aware. How did we get here? Uh, who you know, Maybe for those people who haven't been following the story as closely as you have. 
Sure, it's a, a lot of controversy for yes. a company, like for an organization like Mozilla, uh, something they're definitely not used to. So about, what's well, about, it was at the end of, of March, uh, Mozilla announced that Brendan Eich would be the new CEO. It's been about a year that they went without a CEO. They had some, you know, an, an interim CEO before. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was about time to to get a real CEO. And they chose Brandon Ike, which seemed like a really good idea. He's the inventor of JavaScript. He's been at Mozilla since the, the first days. Um, really good technical guy and, and very well respected in the in the tech community. Problem was um, he donated one thousand uh, dollars in support of Proposition Eight, uh, the the California gay marriage ban back mm -hmm. in two thousand eight. And that became a, a huge controversy um, just the day after he was announced. So I think just the same day, actually. Sure. It was uh, a huge deal, um, big, big protests online, especially online inside the Mozilla community. And he stepped down just, just 11 days into his uh, CEO ship. So that was uh, very unusual for Mozilla and truly hurt the company as well. Absolutely. And now the interim CEO, of course, is Chris Beard. Um, mm -hmm. What, uh, you know, who is Chris Beard? What can we expect from him? Is this uh, the kind of change, you know, that might ultimately lead to Chris getting the nod for CEO, uh, you know, more so than just interim CEO at this point? <laughs> who is he and what can he do for Mozilla? Well, Mozilla itself kind of hints at that, that he is a strong candidate for sure. CEO. So Chris Beard has been at Mozilla since the early days as well. And he's, he was, uh, he had a lot of positions. He was a VP for product and marketing. He was the chief innovation officer, chief, um, chief innovation, chief marketing officer. And he, he had a bunch of other functions at Mozilla. And then he left about a year ago and became in entrepreneur in residence or executive in residence at Greylock Partners. Um, just about a year ago. And then um, today he was announced as the the uh, interim CEO. And my expectation is he'll be the CEO pretty soon as well. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But sure. uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, the, the Greylock, um, Greylock being a very big VC firm, obviously. Um, and Chris Beard is going to be on the, the, the board of directors. No matter what happens, he's going to be on the board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, Reed Hoffman is on the board of directors, another Greylock partner. And if I remember it right, and, and one of the older CEOs from Mozilla is um, also a Greylock partner. So we've got a pretty interesting connection here to Greylock right sure. now. Not sure what that means really, where that will take the, the organization, but it's just interesting to kind of see that connection that's happening there. From, from your own personal perspective and, and you know, as you followed this story, do you think Chris is a good person to step in a uh, good selection was there anyone that that might have been a strong contender as well or well it's, it's kind of hard to to think about who sure. else was a contender there my, my feeling is that as an insider as somebody who's been around mm -hmm. mozilla for a long time had a lot of functions is well respected inside the mozilla community um, has not donated anything to anything related to Proposition 8, as far as I could see. <laughs> pretty sure but, they've added that one at this I'm point. Yeah. Sure they just to make sure. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, that whole story, it's, it's just hard to figure out, you know, does it mean we, we now have to vet anything anybody ever donated to anything, really? But right. uh, it's, a, it's a different story. But as far as we can assume, they vetted him pretty closely this time around because they do not want to have another CEO for just two Abs weeks. Absolutely not. Now, that that kind of leads into my next question here. Uh, obviously for Mozilla, you know, Firefox browsers, they aren't necessarily the hotness they once were. Chrome is, you know, always kind of nipping at its heels every day. And then you have Firefox OS, which is interesting, still very early days, great ambition, hasn't really caught on quite yet, um, but you know, there's potential there. Mozilla obviously has a lot of stake, uh, and this is undoubtedly a very difficult time for Mozilla. Will people forget the controversy, forgive Mozilla? Uh, what's it going to take for Mozilla to get back on top? Well, this this controversy played out in the mainstream media as well, right? It wasn't just a tech me a tech technology block kind of story, but it, it yeah. played out all over the place. It was you know CNN, Drudge Report, anything people read really. Um, I'm sure it hurt Mozilla. It hurt Firefox. I'm sure um, losing Brendan Eich as a technology leader is going to hurt Firefox and and, and Mozilla. In the long run, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at things like Firefox OS, and that's, yeah, 
it, it looks interesting, but it's just not catching on. Right. Version 2.0 looks interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be much better as we, you know, as you should expect from version 2.0. You would hope um, anyways. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, uh, Firefox itself is getting this new user interface, right? It's going to look mm -hmm. a lot like Chrome very soon. Um, I don't know. I, I do like Mozilla. I do like their mission. I do like what they want, you know, what they stand for in, sure. in our tech ecosystem. Um, they've hurt themselves quite a bit with this. And I'm sure we'll see a little bit of a fallout from that. I think the bigger problem they really face is just a competition from, from Chrome, for example, and, and, and other mobile operating system. That makes sense. Well, Frederick, I really want to thank you for coming on today to talk about the future of Mozilla. It's fascinating stuff. Where can people find you and your work online? Well, usually on techcrunch.com or at uh, Frederick L on Twitter. Awesome. Frederick, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. And finally, how about a patent story that doesn't involve Samsung versus Apple? Uh, this one is about a patent that Google recently filed that might actually bring a sliver of Google Glass functionality to contact lenses. We heard a while back that Google was working on augmented contact lenses for use with monitoring blood glucose levels in diabetics. This patent details a lens that has a number of tiny cameras embedded in them for things like warning the visually impaired of an upcoming obstacle to, yes, snapping pictures from the wearer's point of view. Science fiction stuff, people. Now, let's see if Google can take this patent and turn it into something tangible and soon, because that's really cool. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show by going to twit.tv slash TN2. You can also write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Do not miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today. And that's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.